Hi everyone, welcome to the third lesson for M1 Topic 2 Kinematics of Motions in Straight Line. Alright, so let's start with the learning outcome of today. Okay, so in today's session, we are going to look at how to use appropriate formula for motion with constant acceleration in a straight line. Alright, so the key point here is actually the words constant acceleration. So you must remember that all the formulas that we are going to look at today, right, is all about constant acceleration. So which means if let's say you do not have a uniform acceleration, you shouldn't be using this all formula. All right. So the formula of today is actually uh, known as Suvat formula. So there are all together five formulas that we will be uh, discussing later. Okay. So for the problem solving part, right, the questions that you might uh, you might encounter will be the question that may need more than one equation for you to solve or in the situation given itself it will involve more than one particle okay so we'll be looking at one examples each before you are going to look at the past year question by yourself all right so let's start with the introduction all right, so this is about equation of constant acceleration, the Suvat formula, okay? So we'll be looking at five equations that relating five variables that including S, U, V, A, and T, okay? So this is how the words Suvat formula comes from. So S stands for how far the particle move, U, how fast the particle move at the beginning, and V, how fast the particle move at the end, then A is what is the acceleration, what is the rate of change for the velocity from the initial to the end, and then after that T, then how long is the duration for the whole situation given. Okay, so for the five equation, each equation will kind of relate four of four out of the five variable. So which means if let's say the first one, then it might be S U V A, then the second one maybe U V A T and so on. Alright. So that's why we will have five formula. So if you are taking or uh, physics or you learn from me uh physics privacy in your IGCSE or SVM, right? I guess this is a part that you might be quite familiar with that. Alright. So actually, in the first lesson, when I tried to introduce the concept of distance, displacement, velocity, uh, speed, and also acceleration, we have actually learned two of the Suvat formula already. Alright, so let's start to do a bit of revision so that we can try to write out the two formula that we have learned previously, and after that, we try to derive the other three from these two. Okay, so we know that if an object has constant acceleration A, Okay, with initial velocity u and it reaches the final velocity v in the time duration given t. Okay, so then we will have a formula that tells us that the acceleration is basically equal to my final velocity minus my initial velocity and divide by the time, right? Okay, so let us try to rearrange it without the form of fraction. So we try to bring the t to the front. So we have a t will be equal to V minus U, okay? So when we try to rearrange it by uh, moving minus U to the front and we try to write V as our subject, so we'll have our first Suvat formula that tells us that V will be equal to U plus AT, okay? So this is our first Suvat formula and you will realize that within this formula, right, you do not have the variable of S. Okay, so there's no S in the first formula. Okay, so now let's try to look at the second one that we also have learned it previously. Okay, if the acceleration is constant, so you realize that in all the circumstances that we'll be looking at, right, the acceleration must be constant. If it is not constant, meaning that we'll be looking at the next two lessons where we talk about the variable acceleration. Okay, so by combining the concept of if the acceleration is constant, the variable, sorry, the average velocity is the average of the initial velocity and the final velocity. And we know that the average velocity will be actually equal to 1 over 2 u plus v, correct? Because the rate of change of u to v is going to be a constant. So that's why when I try to find the average of the velocity, I just plus them together and divide by 2, I will be able to get the average. So the same thing, I have the other concept that tell me that displacement will be equal to velocity multiplied by time if the velocity is a uniform one. Okay, so I have the other uh, 
formula that is S will be equal to VT. Okay, so the V meaning is going to be the uniform one. So now let's try to imagine if let's say we try to substitute the average velocity inside this formula that I'll be getting S will be equal to 1 over 2 U plus VT. Okay, so these are the two formula that we have actually got it in our first lesson. Okay, so now we are going to derive the other three formula by substituting a uh, different variable inside these two equations. Okay, so perhaps let us try to write down the two equations here so it's easier for us to look at it later. So the first one is V is equal to U plus AT. Then the next one is S is equal to 1 over 2 and then U plus V multiply T. Alright, sorry, I think I missed out something here. Okay, yeah, the second Suat formula, you can realize that there's no A here. Okay, so now let us try to derive the third equation. Okay, so the third equation, what we want to do here is we want to derive a formula that without V here. Okay, so the idea is we want to eliminate V from the equation 1 and 2. So you can imagine what do we need to do if let's say we want to eliminate V, then I can try to always substitute the equation 1 into equation 2 so that I will try to change the V here to U plus AT, right? So I will be able to get S will be equal to 1 over 2 and then U plus, so V is basically U plus AT. Alright, then after that, U plus AT, and don't forget the T outside. Alright, so just substitute the V inside the place here. So after that, then let me try to expand it. So 1 over 2, bring the T, so 1 over 2T, and I have 2U plus AT here. Alright, then let us try to expand it, then I'll be able to get my third Suvat formula, which is S will be equal to UT plus 1 over 2 at squared. Okay, so just by expand it. Alright, so this will be our third formula, which we do not have the variable v, which we do not have the final velocity. Alright, so now let us try to derive the fourth one. So we try to substituting the t. Okay, so you can imagine if let's say we have v will be equal to u plus at, right? So from here, I'll be able to get that T is basically equal to V minus U divided by A, right? So by rearranging this equation, then now I'll try to substitute this into my second equation. So S is equal to 1 over 2 U plus V, and now I substitute my T here, V minus U over A. Alright, so now let's try to expand it. So S will be equal to, so 1 over 2a, and we try to uh, expand this. So I'll be able to get uv minus u square plus v square minus uv. Alright, so uv minus uv, I get nothing here, then I try to rearrange this. So I'll be able to get, and I try to bring 2a to the front, so I'll be able to get 2as will be equal to v square minus u square. Okay? So when we try to arrange it by moving the u square to the front, then I'll be able to get the final velocity square will be equal to u square plus 2as. Okay, so this will be my uh, fourth formula, which I do not have the time here. Alright, so this is u. Sorry, let me try to just try it a bit more proper here. Okay, so u. Okay, so this is my fourth formula. Okay, so now... Uh, yeah, you can see that the first one is without S, without A, and then without V, and without T. So now we want to do another one with without our U. Alright, so you realize that later when you try to look at the formula, right, the last one isn't that uh, useful or is not that popular when we try to talk about the formula because the idea of itself is pretty uh, awkward that if... Uh, I mean, normally you will have the initial velocity rather than the final velocity. Yeah, when we try to look at it like this. And uh, yeah, so anyway, let us try to uh, expand it. So let us try to form the formula first. So eliminate u from the equation 1 and 2. So it's the same thing here. So what we try to do is we try to write u in front as the object. 
So u will be equal to v minus a t, right? Okay, so the same thing, we try to substitute this in our second equation. So s will be equal to 1 over 2. So this is the place that I substitute my u. So v minus a t and then plus t, sorry, plus v, then multiply by t. Alright, so same thing, let's try to expand it. So 1 over 2t, so v plus v, I have 2v and minus a t. Then after that, let us expand it, then I'll be able to get s will be equal to v t minus 1 over 2 a t squared. Okay, so this will be the fifth formula, which we do not have u inside this formula. Alright. So in general, all the five equations here are only valid if the acceleration is constant. So meaning that if the velocity doesn't increasing or decreasing with a constant rate, you cannot use all this formula. Okay, so I have written here, note that when the acceleration is not uniform, all this formula are then not valid and you shouldn't be using them. All right. So these are the formula that will be given in your exam. So you realize that you have your first, second, third, and fourth, but not the last one. Yeah, so like what I say in terms of uh, how practical or how useful it is, that the last one is less helpful in the way that normally we will have the initial rather than the final. So it's, it's not practical enough for us to use this. Okay, a simple notes I have put in here before we move on to the example, right, is that uh, when you look at any question, so you must make sure that the direction of the vectors that you try to put in, right, it must be consistent in your question or uh, in your solution. So which means if you decide that to towards the right hand side is positive, so any motion which going towards the left hand side should be negative. So you must make sure that your positive and negative sign are all correct when you try to assign uh, into all these variable. Okay, so must make sure that the direction are all consistent when you try to look at the question. Alright, so that's the idea. So now let's try to look at the first example. Alright, so you'll realize that for number one and two, the question is actually quite straightforward. So yeah, I'm just trying to ensure that the example goes from easier to harder because I understand that some of you are from art class, so you might not encounter all this formula before. So I just want to ensure that you understand uh, why at this time I'm choosing the second formula instead of the first one, that maybe I choose the fourth one, but why is that not the first, second, and third? Okay, so to differentiate and to apply which one. So if let's say you are quite familiar with it and you wish to go on by yourself feel free to do so then after that you only check your answer by fast forward this uh, video all right so let's try to look at example one here all right example one a car initially traveling at eight meter per second accelerates at a constant rate of three meter per, uh, per second square so until it is traveling at 17 meter per second so find the distance uh, traveled and also the time taken for accelerate okay so uh, what is very helpful in this kind of question is to state everything by using the symbol that we are familiar with so which means the s u v a t then it will be easier for for us to continue okay so in this question what is the information given the car initially traveling at 8 so meaning our initial velocity is going to be 8 okay so accelerate at a constant rate of 3 so that's why I have acceleration is equal to 3 okay so the unit doesn't matter here so you only make sure that you write your unit at your last answer as your final answer but if let's say you forget you won't be penalized for that as well but i think it is a very helpful thing uh let's say for you to check your answer and so on okay so until it is traveling at 17 meter per second so that's why i have my final velocity which is 17. okay so let's try to find A. So A, the question one is to find the distance traveled while accelerating. So meaning that I'm actually finding my S. Okay, so you might have a question that how am I going to choose among the five? So which means that you can try to check with your variable here. So you have U, A, V and you need to find S. So which is the formula that gives you a connection, the relationship between these four variables? 
and you will realize that you do not involve any T. So when you are choosing it, that meaning that you should find the one that with U, A, S, and V, but without T. So in this term, then this is the one that is most suitable. Okay, so that's why I'm going to use V square equal to U square plus 2AS. Okay, so that's the idea of it. So let us try to substitute. So we can try to copy first. V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. So we can substitute all the numbers. So 17 square will be equal to 8 square plus 2 and A is 3 and S is the number that we want to find. Okay, so when you try to do this right, you must make sure that so initially traveling like this, right? So it accelerates also this direction and it traveling at the final velocity also this direction. So make sure everything that you are writing, so all these are positive because they are on the same direction. Yeah, so make sure that you are writing in a right way. Okay, so uh, 1, 7, so you have 2, 8, 9 will be equal to 64 plus 6s. Okay, so 6s is 225, so we can have our answer s is equal to 37.5 meter. Okay, so just based on your question, and you should be able to uh, realize what is the unit for this question. Okay, so for b, Okay, so you see it's the same uh, variable here. Okay, so you might have a question that do I need to add in this inside the information and I find my time taken. Okay, so uh, for my, I mean, if you were to ask me, right, I will always encourage you to use the information given by the question rather than the information that you got it from part A. Because you realize that actually you have three and you want to find T, actually you have more, uh, you have, sufficient variable you have sufficient information to help you to solve this question so it's actually not uh i mean it's unnecessary for you to use the s here although you can but you need to risk or uh, you need to uh, take a risk that if let's say you do any calculus mistake in your part a and that will result your b to be wrong already so that's why if you have a choice then normally i'll encourage you to use the information given rather than the information that you got it okay so that's the idea so we need a uh, formula that connect u a v t together so the info the variable that i doesn't need is s so that's why in this question then i'll be able to choose the first one which is u is equal to Sorry, V is equal to U plus AT. Okay, so now similar uh, like number one. So just substitute 17 is equal to 8 plus AT. Okay, so 3T will be equal to 9. So this is how I get my answer. T equal to 3 seconds. Okay, so I think that's pretty easy. So let's try to look at example two. Alright, question 2. A go-kart travel down a slope of length 70 meters. So what you can try to do is you just draw a slope here. So this is the slope. Okay, so we have the distance is going to be 70 meter. So it's given a push and after that it start moving at the initial velocity. So you are given the initial velocity. So the velocity accelerates at a constant rate of 2 meter per second square so the question wants you to find what is the velocity at the bottom here then after that find the time taken for the go kart to reach the bottom of the slope okay so yeah so you realize that in this question they mentioned about given a push like right so i'm just going to uh give a very brief idea that uh that what uh the 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 thing that i have uh, mentioned previously so for this chapter we are going to look at the motion of the particle only so which means we don't care about what is the forces what is the push that actually uh, cause the motion so in this chapter we are going to look at the motion only so which means what is the speed what is the displacement what is the acceleration and so on and for the push the work done and so on we'll be looking at the uh, uh, looking it at the other chapters okay so it's the same thing. Let us try to uh, write down the information by using the uh, symbol that we are familiar with. So the length 70, so we have S is equal to 70 meter. Okay, so it's given a push that moves by an uh, initial velocity, which is U is 3. Accelerate at a constant rate is 2, so A is equal to 2. 
All right, so that's the three information given. And the first thing the question wants you to find is find the velocity at the bottom of the slope. So which means what you need to find is the final velocity, which is the V. Okay, so similar, we need uh, an formula that, a formula that uh, relates S, U, A, V together. Okay, and uh, with that, then we'll be using the formula of V square is equal to U square plus to a s okay so since we are finding v so we can just substitute here so 3 square plus 2 a is 2 and s is 70 so i'll be able to get 289 so by solving this then i know that my v should be equal to positive negative 17 right 289 so square root okay so you have two answer here and you need to decide one of it so you should realize that in this question, do you think that it involves any change in your direction? So basically, it traveled down, right? It traveled down, then after that, at the end part, you are still moving at the same direction. And one thing that you should be able to realize that is it accelerate. So that's why your final velocity should be a number that is greater than your initial velocity. So that's the case where we talk about acceleration, right? If not, then it's going to be decelerate already. So if let's say this is the idea, it accelerate and it's given a positive acceleration. So that's why our V should be an answer that is greater than our U. So which means that our V should be greater than 3. So by having this, then we know that our answer for V should be positive 17 meter per second. All right. So that's the idea. Okay, so now let's try to find the second one, find the time taken. So what is our T here? Okay, so for this purpose then we have S, U, A and T. So we'll be uh, using the formula of S equal to U, T plus 1 over 2, A, T square. So same thing, let's try to just substitute. So we have 70 equal to 3, T plus 1 over 2 and a is 2 so t is the variable that we want to find okay so by rearrange it then i'll be able to get t square plus 3t minus 70 equals to 0 okay so uh, this is an equation that you can just factorize so t plus 10 and then t minus 7 all right, and I'll be able to get two answer as well, which is going to be negative 10 and then 7. Okay, so now by looking at this, which is a logical answer? So we are trying to find t, so which is time. So do you think that we can have a negative number for time? So we cannot, so that's why t should be a positive number. So t is equal to 7 second. Okay, so that's why you make sure that you write the correct unit. Okay, so let's try to uh, look at the third example. All right, number three. According to driving guidelines, the minimum braking distance of a car traveling at 20 meter per second is 30 meter. Okay, so A, you need to find that deceleration of the car. And B, what is the time that it will take for the car to stop? Okay, so uh, by reading this question, you will realize that you might be given only two information, so which is the traveling. So this obviously will be your initial velocity, right, which is 20 meter per second. And you have 30 meter here so let me just write down so you have initial velocity is 20 and we have the minimum braking distance so which means it's going to be our displacement is 30 okay so let me try to explain this question a bit right so meaning that uh, when you drive a car the minimum braking distance so if let's say you are driving with a speed of 20 meter per second if let's say you want to uh, break a car right so maybe at this time moment then you try to press the brake the brake Okay, so you will need a distance of actually 30 seconds so that you can break successfully. So what is this uh, situation tell you? So you will have your last final velocity here as well. So when you break your car, then what is your final velocity? So what you want to do is you want to stop the car, right? So that's why your final velocity will eventually be zero. Okay, so that's the information that you will need to understand yourself from the or quite the context of the question so which means a the question one is to find the deceleration basically you are finding your a okay so uh 
I mean, what's the difference when they ask you about acceleration and deceleration is the way when you try to write your answer. So later when we got our answer, then you will understand it. So similar with number two, so we have U, S, V, and A. So you might need to choose the formula without T. Okay, so in this case, the formula that will be helpful is V squared equal to U squared plus 2AS. Okay, so now we can try to substitute the information that we have. So 0 squared will be equal to 20 squared plus 2A is the variable that we want to find and then 30. Okay, so by solving this, then you will be able to get 60A is equal to negative 400. All right. So by solving this, you can always try your answer in fraction. It doesn't matter also. So negative 6, 2 over 3. All right. And you realize that this is a number that is in negative. So that's why it's going to be a deceleration. And obviously, right, because you have a uh, 20. So your initial velocity is 20. And after that, when you break your car, then of course, this velocity is decreasing. So that's why it should be a deceleration rather than a uh, acceleration so that's why when you try to write this answer you must make sure that since you already write as deceleration so your answer shouldn't have any negative sign because your deceleration means that it's getting uh the the rate of the rate of change of the velocity is actually getting uh lower and lower so that's why your deceleration the magnitude is two then 2 over 3, sorry, it's 6, 2 over 3 meter per second square. Okay, so that's the idea. So B, similar, so you need to find the T, okay, the time taken for the car to stop, so that's why you are finding your T. Alright, so you need a formula that with S, U, V, and T. So like what I say, you can always use your result in A, but to prevent that you have careless mistake in part A, so always use the information given by the question rather than the information that you found yourself. So U, S, B, T, then you will need the formula of S will be equal to 1 over 2 and then U plus V multiply T. Okay, so same thing, substitute, so 30, 1 over 2, 20 plus 0 and then multiply t and I'll be able to get 10t is equal to 30 so which will give me t equal to 3 second okay so that's the idea so if let's say you get a negative answer right then you would know that there's something wrong in your answer already so this is how you check so similar to a so you know that you are breaking a car so that's why the acceleration should be a negative one so if you are getting a positive one then you also know that your answer is wrong so this is uh how you always use the common sense of the logical idea to help you to uh help you to check your answer lah, basically okay so let's try to look at the fourth and the fifth one okay number four a trolley has a constant acceleration after two seconds it has traveled eight meter and after another two seconds it traveled another 20 meter so the question want you to find the acceleration okay so this is a question that you realize that is given like two or uh, scenario here so basically you will understand that this is the question that you might need to form two equations that you solve simultaneously okay because yeah you realize that you do not have enough information now yeah because you have t then you have your s and you know that the acceleration is constant but you do not have any idea about the u and the v so you cannot straight away get your answer by using only one formula okay so it will be helpful that for us to draw then you can understand what is that mean okay if let's say this is our origin right then what happened is this is when t equals to zero so after two seconds, meaning maybe after here, okay, so after two seconds, it reaches here and is travel eight meter. Then after that, after another two seconds, so when t equals to four here, it travel another 20. So that's why it's going to be here to here is another 20. Okay, so we might need to make sure that our U and V, we have one in common, then only we can solve simultaneous, right? Because if not, you, if you are using all the different U and V, then it doesn't help you to solve the question. So that's why the first one that we have is when our trolley is at T equals to 2 and when our trolley is at T equals to 4. And when we try to refer to T equals to 0, both of these trolley will obviously have the same initial velocity which is u 
Okay, so I hope we uh you can get what we mean here. So we can try to write down the two situations so that can understand better. Okay, so at the first one is when t equals to two, then I knew that it has traveled eight meter, right? So my displacement is going to be eight. Okay, and I have a initial velocity which I don't know, which I will write u, and I have a constant acceleration which I don't know as well, which I will write a. Okay, so by using this four variable here, then I will know that I will be able to use the formula that u equal to u, sorry, s equal to ut plus 1 over 2at square. Okay, so now I'll try to substitute. So I can substitute and I'll be able to get 8 equal to my u and then the t is 2 plus 1 over 2a and then 2 square. Okay, so now let's try to simplify and I'll be able to get 8 equal to 2u plus 2a. Alright, so divide by 2 so I can get u plus a is equal to 4. So this is how I get my first equation. So now I'll need to have the other scenario so that I can get my second equation that I can solve simultaneous. Okay, so by having this then I, it's at the last stage, right? So it's t equals to 4. So what is the total displacement here? So you might have a question that can I do 20 or I should take the whole one. So you see, right, we need a common uh, variable here. So in this case, our common variable is actually the initial velocity, which we assume, uh, which we assume that in both situations, so the uh, when we try to create the formula, we should always start from t equals to zero with the initial velocity u. So that's why from the time t equals to 0 until the time when t equals to 4, what is the total displacement that take place here? It's going to be 8 and then plus 20, right? So this is how we get 28. Okay, so I hope that you can understand the idea. So you might have a question that can I try to do t equals to 2 since from 2 to 4 is 2. Then after that, I do 20 meter instead of 8. Then you might have a problem here is you do not have a con common variable anymore because we do not know what is our final velocity here. So which means you wouldn't have any number that in uh, in common, you share in common with your equation 1. So that's why it's easier that we try to always use our initial velocity at t equals to 0 as our beginning. Okay, so by having so that I have u and a also. All right. So now I'll try to substitute by using the same formula here. So S is 28 and then U 4 plus 1 over 2A and then 4 squared. So now let's try to simplify. So 28 equal to 4U plus 1 over 2, 16, so 8A. So divide by 4, so I'll be able to get 7 equal to U plus 80. Okay, plus 2a, I'm sorry. So this is how I get my second formula. Alright, so now I can solve them simultaneously. So I can do number 2 minus number 1. Alright, so 7 minus 4, then I can get 3. So equal to, so u minus u, I can get 0. Then 2a minus a, then I'll be able to get a. So this gives me my answer of a is equal to 3 meter per second square. Okay, so that's our answer. So this question only wants us to find the acceleration. So if you want, then you always can try to check your initial velocity for your further check. Okay, so that's this question. Yeah, so I hope that you can understand the idea where you need to find something in common so that uh, you can have two equations that share the same variable, then uh, only you can continue to solve it. All right, so now let's try to look at the final question. Alright, number 5. Two points A and B are 8 meters apart and lie in the same horizontal plane. Okay, let us just draw everything out in a diagram so you can understand the situation better. Okay, so now we have this horizontal plan, and you have two points on the plan, so which is A and B. And the distance between these two points is actually 8 meters. Alright? So there is a particle that passes point A with a speed of 2 meter per second. So which means this is particle 1. Alright, so you have an initial speed. Okay, so we can just write it in velocity. So U is equal to 2. And 
is in the direction of point B. So we already decide that the position towards the right hand side is going to be our positive direction. So that's why our velocity is positive too. So the particle is accelerating at a constant rate of 2. So that's why A is equal to 4. Okay, sorry, 4. All right. So now at the same time, you have a second particle which is passing through B with a speed of 3 meter per second in the direction of point A, so which means the direction is the other side. Okay, so since it's the opposite direction, so that's why our initial velocity should be negative 3. Okay, so this is very important as what we mentioned when we tried, uh, when we first introduced the formula, right? So we must make sure that the direction of the motion of the situation is consistent uh, towards the whole question. So if let's say you already decide from A to B is positive, so from B to A it should be a negative. So the act is accelerating at a constant rate of 2, but it's because of the first, uh, opposite direction, so that's why A is negative 2. Alright, so now the question one is to determine the time in second that has passes when the two particles meet and what is their position when this happened. Okay, so let us try to uh, imagine what happened here is that I have a time where these two particles, they will meet each other. So perhaps it's here. I'm not sure where is it, okay? So meaning at this point, right, these two particles will both reach here and this is where they meet each other, okay? So now I have a question for you. If let's say this is the point that they meet each other, right? So which means I can say that from here to here is going to be the displacement for the first particle. From here to here is going to be my displacement for my second particle. Okay, so my question is simple that do you think that my S1 and S2 is the same? Okay, so you can uh, take a few seconds to think about it. Yeah, I hope that you doesn't say that because this is shorter and this is longer. So that's why, yeah, this is just an illustration. But in terms of theory, do you think that S1 and S2 is the same? So you might have a question here is that they might be the same. What is the reason? Because displacement, we are talking about the position. So that's why when these two particles, they read, they meet each other, right? Which means they are at the same location. They are at the same position. So that's why S1, S2 should be the same. Because we are not talking about the distance. We are talking about the displacement, which means it's the position, right? So since they are both in the same position, then isn't it they are the same? So do you think that this statement or this idea is a correct one? Yeah. Okay, so let me try to explain it like this. So when we try to talk about displacement, right, you remember that there must be a fixed point. So you have an origin, then after that displacement basically is what is the net change in the position when you try to compare to the initial point. So the idea just now is correct if A and, sorry, if your particle A and, if your particle 1 and particle 2 start from the same point, but now the problem here is the starting point of particle 1 and particle 2 isn't the same. So you can imagine when we try to talk about S1, right, we are referring to this starting point. When we are trying to talk about S2, right, we are referring to this starting point. So a simple idea is that you can imagine if let's say this is my original point, right, and they try to meet each other here, so the distance between here is 8. So for A, for particle A, right, we refer to this origin, original point. So from here to here, perhaps if let's say I try to write a 3 here. Okay, so which means my S1 is positive 3. So what do you think is my S2? Is it going to be 2? Uh, is it going to be 3 also? No, because the problem here is my initial point is here. When I try to com compare my position, I always compare to my origin. So that's why for S2, what is it? Is it 5? The distance is 5, but the velocity is going to be negative 5. Because to the right hand side is positive, so that's why to the left hand side is negative. So from this idea, right, we can actually get our first equation here, which is that S1 and S2 isn't the same. But what is the thing that we can got it from here is that how can I get it from 3 and negative 5? It's S1 minus S2, right? So I have my first equation, which tell me that S1 minus S2, it will be equal to 8. 
So this will be very helpful when we move on later. So which means in another words, right, I can say that S2 will be equal to my S1 minus 8. Okay, and this forms my first equation. So now we'll be using the information that given for each particle for me to get the uh, for me to get the second one and also the third equation. So we have our first particle here, alright, so for the first particle, so there are a few information that we have here, so which is the U, A, and also we have the connection, uh, the relationship of S1, S2, and obviously we need our T lab because that's the thing that the question requires us to find. So uh, by having U, A, S, and T, so the equation that will be uh, suitable in this question will be S equal to U, T plus 1 over 2 A, T squared. Okay, so this is the first particle, so that's why it's S1 equal to our U is 2, and then the T plus 1 over 2 A is 4, and then T squared. So from here, then I'll be able to get my equation that gives me S1 is equal to 2t plus 2t squared. Okay, so that's kind of my second equation. So now, move on to the third particle then. So for the third particle, okay, sorry, for the second particle, I'm sorry, for the third equation, and it's coming from the second particle, Alright, so by using the same equation, because that is the same information that I'm having, which u is negative 3 and a is negative 2. So it can straight away substitute. So s2 will be equal to uh, u is negative 3, t plus 1 over 2, a is negative 2, and then t squared. So from here, then I'll be able to get s2 is equal to negative 3t minus t squared. So this is my third equation, and I always can use my first equation so that I left with two variables only instead of having S1, S2, and T. So that's why my first one substitute into the third one. So I'll be able to get S1 minus 8, it should be equal to negative 3T minus T squared. So rearrange it, then I can get S1 is equal to 8 minus 3t minus t squared. And that gives me equation 4. Okay, so by using this, then I can compare to my second equation. So 2 and 4, we try to equate them together, which means S1 here should be equal to S1 here, right? So that's why I'll be able to get 2t plus 2t squared. It will be equal to 8 minus 3t minus t squared. So now let us try to solve it. So t squared move in front. So I have 3t squared plus 5t minus 8, which will give me 0. So factorize. So 3t plus 8 and then t minus 1. So expand, yeah, that's correct. So equals to zero, and I'll be able to get my answer, which t is equal to negative eight over three and one. Okay, so by having this, then I know that my t should be a positive number, right? So that's why I'll be choosing t equals to one second. All right, so now we can continue to get our s then, yeah, because we need to get their position when this happened. So we can try to check our S1 first by using our number 2 equation maybe. So from equation 2, so I know that S1 is equal to 2, 1 plus 2, 1 squared. Okay, so I know that is 2 plus 2, so it's going to give me 4. So similarly, I'm going to use my S2 to check. So this is from uh, equation 3. So from equation 3, then I know that S2 will be equal to negative 3, 1, minus 1 squared. So from here, then I can get negative 4. So which means that it's correct because I know that from here to this is my A and this is my B, right? So for my particle A, it passes through point A. So from here to here, it's going to be 4. So from here to here, it's going to be negative 4. So that proves that the distance between these two is going to be 8 meters. So this is how I know that my answer is correct.
Okay, so when you try to write your answer, right? So you can always just write down the particle move, the particle. Yeah, because you need to indicate where is the four meter from, right? So the particle meets at four meter from point A when T equals to one second. Okay, so that's how you solve this question. So I hope that you can understand the whole idea of it. All right, so this is the part one for the Suvat formula. So in the next lesson, we'll be looking at the vertical motion. It's going to be a pretty short one because it's just going to be the second part. So I hope that you can uh, spend some time to be familiar with the formula before we move on to that. After that, the next lesson, we are going to talk about variable acceleration. All right, so yeah, see you in the next lesson. All right, thank you.